we work as a team. The three of us, we can accomplish anything. Don't mess with the fight. Trotsky looking for that damage, finds him on the Diablo, Diablo forced it back out as their health drops low, the Immortal now is at 20 Back down, yo, on the green man, give me the first ball. But is it ETC? No, that's Malthale up there, a triple. The Leila and Yudes in the back, catching three people on top. That followed up by the APOC and the lurking arm. Catching two, but this time on, it's gonna be the first one. Wow, did you see that mosh pit? Four man mosh pit, while on a conveyor belt. That was like a regular sushi. There's the lead, catches him in the mud pit. Time trap does pop, uh, mosh pit goes out. Ruby's still in trouble, pops the stay a listen, but it's not gonna I didn't think they had a chance. I thought it was all over. We said all or nothing, and they got absolutely everything. Good evening, hello, welcome to twitch.tv slash El Taquito. As always, I am your host, Taco. With me tonight, we have the wonderful, mischievous Darian, and of course, as always, the lovely Sil Coffee. What is going on, everybody? Sil Coffee, how are you this evening? I'm good, thanks. Excited to be here. Absolutely. Tonight, we have a wonderful matchup between Anti Clown Association versus Baby Makers. I did not change your name, no! I did everything oh, no, except yes. that. Oh <laughs> my goodness, you are not Slinkmeister. There we go, that's fixed. And now that everything's right, <laughs> sorry about that. Um, Thanks, Taco. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's run over to the map screen. Darian, you just lay right there like a sleepy boy. Uh, Anti Clown Association won, I believe, won the toss. Anyway, they have first pick. Uh, they banned Sky Temple and Infernal Shrines, Baby Makers banned Dragonshire and Cursed Hollow, and Baby Makers has elected to take us to Battlefield of Eternity. So, Coffee, what do you want to see out of these really high-level teams with or here on Battlefield of Eternity? Okay, so I'm not sure I should say this, but I want to see murderation. I want to see like some really sweaty team fighting. What do you think, I... Taco? Yeah, if for no other reason than uh, Storm Division likes to not uh, play sweaty in the early game. Um, they usually like to go back and forth, just kind of doing their own thing, getting so whatever, and then and then later on to like win a fight than then the game. I, I would like to see a lot of blood too. We are moving on into the draft. So with this murderation, are there any heroes you want to see that are really good at race? and burning people down or you just want to see full team fight focus ah hanzo play i think is very popular on this map for that reason we've seen lots of wombo combos with what he's capable of doing lots of poke and great race what do you think i think uh i think that works out pretty well uh really good engages i'd like to see definitely a lot of cc out of some front line not just on the tank but on bruisers as well we see Anti-Clown Association lead with that Lucio ban. I think that's uh, I think that's gonna kind of lead to opportunities for Chase. Don't don't want Lucio to have the ability to get his team away. Don't don't want the high five cleanses and etc. And Babymakers is going to respond with the Faustad ban. Ooh, excuse me. I was a, that popped out of nowhere. Um, I like that ban. That. Falstad is a playmaker. Gust and level 20 uh, wind tunnel is pretty OP in my opinion. 
I think so as well, especially here where there's a lot of walls on this map to corner people, and a Faustad Gust can really make for a rough engage for the receiving team. My Ev, really strong engage. Speaking of hero. engage. <laughs> yeah, really strong engage hero, really strong escapes. Just in general, uh, with this My Ev in the game, you should probably be a little bit afraid uh, because yeah. you don't see her and then you're dead. Feel the same way about Junkrat too. A lot of displacements. He's very disruptive. He has great poke. He can be a playmaker too if he's really good with booping people into traps. So I understand that ban. I will fight to my last breath. Yeah, and then Rhaegar. Rhaegar coming through. There's been a lot of discussion about Rhaegar recently about is he still strong? Is he still effective? Is he gonna be my dad? Like, just all of these questions that a lot of people are asking. And the answer to all three of them is yes. Agreed. I think his healing numbers are extremely high still. He provides a lot of mud and he has that baseline cleanse. Oh, I love the way you said that. Say that again. The baseline cleanse? No, the mud. <laughs> oh, mud, yeah, from his totems. Very mud. hard to go around it if you can't. You even said it so <laughs> Thick like mud. I love it. So, in response to the Rhaegar, there's a Diablo Tracer. I like the Tracer early pick is usually pretty rough, especially now this Tank Darian. Tank Darian. This Tank Darian more than likely is going to be taunt. I mean, like more likely going to be tank. Is a really strong counter to Tracer. But with that Rhaegar early pick, Tracer kind of avoids the totems. Uh, the purge is a thing, but it's not an Uther. If they, if ACA wants to pick an Uther, they've got to commit a lot of resources to it now. Now that they have both their variant and the Rhaegar, and the Tychus pick in response to, to the Diablo, I think is pretty good as well. Also, Diablo being taken with the Tracer denies Diablo to ACA, who I think Diablo is a pretty good pick in a Tracer with the point click and the point click and the point. If you can kill her during the stun time works out really well I think. Mm, and they said no to blaze speaking of cc and mud they wanted to get rid of that blaze blaze has been seen a lot in the off lane recently at least in all of the games that i've been watching and he provides so much engage and still has great wave clear absolutely he's a very versatile hero as well the, the engage the wave clear his ability to do damage in the fights his rescue ability with the homie bunker his lockdown with the slide into combustion for those of us scrubs that still take combustion but we do get to see the hanzo like you're asking and hogger's a pretty yep. damagey bruiser as well hanzo and tracer together it seems kind of interesting but i'm eager to see what happens with it I think this is a lot of dive. Hogger has that potential to hortibolt into the back if the squishies are low. And if Tracer's already back there, they could be um, splitting the teams up in the fights and trying to get um, pick, pick them off one by one. Somebody call Prostman Pat, because we just got a URL pick. <laughs> Let's go. She She's a thick girl. She I is. like it. And, oh, I haven't gotten to say this in so long. Space Goat, coast to coast, coming in <laughs> hot. I, I, I am actually messaging Pat, so uh, talk or something for the viewers. <laughs> All right. And Cheeky picks up the Anduin last. I like this. Um, I just casted with Raka a couple days ago, and she calls Anduin the fun place, and the fun place he is. He can just pull out those Joe. heroes. <laughs> baby Joe. <laughs> Does look like a baby Joe. Uh, Fair enough. Um, and Joanna is the much more grown up, manlier version of Anduin. Um, so, overall, I'm going to get a prediction going for our viewers so that they can also engage with us if you can give me your overall opinions of this draft. Uh oh, I, I think I lost you. Did I lose I'm you? still here. Oh, you're Hello. still here. Oh, I I'm was here. watching on the 30 second delay and wasn't hearing it. And I was very confused. Oh. <laughs> but yeah. What do you think about, about uh, these two drafts and how they'll fare against each other? I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm skeptical of the tracer pick. Like you said, it was an early one. We have a lot of mud going on displacement with the URL. We've got Tychus can burn down things pretty quickly. I'm going to reserve my judgment and see how this plays out. 
I plead the fifth, Taco. See, and I think <laughs> the other team has the better draft. No, I'm kidding. That's a, that's a joke. Alright, so over here on the blue team for Anti Clown Association, we've got all, all five members with the Diamond Hands moniker at the front. We've got Nintori on the Space Goat, Coast to Coast, Got Filth on the Tychus, Sacer Salad, rocking it on the lamest seconds. king in Warcraft, Varian, Kelsier on the Sylvanas, and Valimar. Woof, 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 woof. That is Anti-Clown Association. Who we got for Baitmaker still? Uh, we have Cheekies on the Anduin, Zero on the Dablo, Lupus on the Hanzo, Marbuckle on the Pogger Hogger, and Deathwish on the Tracer. And you do see that classic opening from Baby Makers when there's a Sylvanas on the team or just other really cheesable push. Great timing from the Diablo on the stun onto Kelster into that wall so he so that Kelster could not haunting wave away. They were ready for that cheese. Again, looking at or well Sylvanas goes for the cheese up top with the team. Baby Makers was spread out. They had one at the top, one in the bottom, and three in the middle, so that wherever Sylvanas went. They were ready to respond to the cheese or get into the laning, and they responded quite well. They got first blood, they, and so far they've already gotten more structure damage uh, oh. on ACA with Varian barely walking away alive than Sylvanas got on Maze Maker Towers. What an engaged top. Wow. Hanzo just chilling, but poking them out, safe behind his wall. But they did manage to get a tower down bot while they were having that push up top. Actually, in the entire wall. This bottom tower might go down soon if they don't respond. Absolutely. So far, the full the full set of walls is of wall is down. And Smitty has a really good point. It's really hard to decide which team to root for, but we're casting, so we don't get to make that decision. That burden is been, has been lifted from us. It is a Scatter Arrow Hanzo uh, and a Hot Dog build for the Hogger so far. Uh, talents are on the screen. For those of you watching at home, if you see something interesting, let me know. So, Coffee, you see any uh, any talents worth talking about before we get to this first objective phase? Oh, interesting. Yeah, I don't normally see Rhaegar players go Feral Heart. Um, that's something that I don't see often, so I'm excited to see how that plays out for, for them. Well and I am excited to see the non-totem build builds coming out of Rhaegar with the uh, with the nerf to the recently buffed totem build. Anduin, as you said, the uh, fun slayer or something, um, denied oh, the kill on Diablo, <laughs> and Diablo stalling long enough for uh, Diablo stalls long enough that Anti Clown Association doesn't see the can. He almost dead. He almost dead. He almost dies. And Anduin just says, oh, I don't have, you know what, he doesn't have a get over here, my bad. I thought I had a button for that. Eh. I've got you, father. It's, there you go, you Diablo's do have a button for it. I have many buttons, <laughs> Diablo is the real daddy. That's, that's what we're going with here. Um, <laughs> oh, but we do have a tracer, that's fun. Diablo going in for a flank, but then deciding to push into Nintori. He's getting poked down quite a bit, yeah, but we know that pull has so. been used. I don't think so. He does it. He does go down. That's the uh, first couple of kills onto Baby Makers because Hogger went down in that process as well. Tracer getting a little bit of damage onto the Immortal, but here we have the Siege into the bot lane using the Black Arrows. Gonna go and get this fort, which is about all you could really ask for out of the first Immortal anyway. So kind of yielding the first half, they're gonna make it up in time to contest because Diablo and Hogger were dead. They just had room. Exactly, and that's the value of having those macro characters like um, Sylvanas to be able to turn off those oh, towers. Oh no, Trace of Oh my goodness! Variant no taunting the Tracer <laughs> in place. The Leap of Faith is going to come out, but she's going to recall back to where she was and still make it because Tracer's stupid. Not the player, the character. Just to, just to clarify. Yep. Good Tracer players, if they can, they'll always have that escape ready. I I will say, sometimes it's frustrating when you're ready to escape and your healer's ready, ready to save you, so your heal, healer saves you, and it puts your escape ability on delay so that after they save you, you escape back into danger. 
it, it's just really hard to coordinate those, but it I, it feels so bad sometimes. Anti-clownists. Uh, what amazed me about that whole objective phase is how close they were in the race. Yeah. Both teams. Both teams really pushing down, down the fort, or not the fort, the immortal, trying to avoid a lot of the team fight, going for those picks like we saw very and taunting on the tracer when he could, but most of the focus was on getting the immortal down and keeping the team, the enemy team, away from the races. Diablo getting slowed and taunted again. He's gonna get leap of faith, leap of faith, leap of faith, leap of faith. Where do you put the, the past tips of that? Charging back in onto the Levanta, it's a flip. Kelsey, you're gonna stay alive, barely thanks to the Rengar. No, Tracer's gonna finish it up. Tracer looking really low. Tracer's got a death wish, but no, he's gonna make it out as well. Getting popped back to full health by the Anduin. I guess when you have a small health pool, like any little heal puts you back at full. Quick little exchange there. Diablo finding really good opportunities to engage on Sylvanas. All right. Big taunt coming out on Cheekies, and Cheekies does go down with a hammer from Nintori. Yep. Zero looking for a way to come out. Yep. He was looking for that pull, and Anduin pulled him into the afterlife. I feel like you need a, a rim shot button for that one. Oh, thanks. <laughs> All right, just insane pressure. Anti-Clown Association just not giving the other team an inch and pushing. This is what you're, you were talking about earlier, about how these um, Storm Div teams, they're, they're looking, doing their thing, the macro thing, because the whole point of the game is to kill structures and get to the core, and we're seeing a lot of macro potential being used. They're just pushing, pushing, pushing. They already have 10s online. Yeah, speaking of, Anti-Clown Association coming with the Ancestral Heal, taunt that we saw from level four there's a commandeer odin coming out whatever i think that's uh, the bubble on urel and wailing arrow was that ardent defender right yeah ardent defender yeah the siege damage that you get with odin plus the black arrows you can take down structures incredibly oh, quickly jumping Thanks. across Just methodically I'm just, in. Yeah. I'm holding my breath for when the other team gets their 10, so they really can get a gauge in there. But big light bomb coming out on zero. Three person stun with the light There's bomb. Big old five man Hanzo arrow. The ancestral hill is going to make it out onto the absorbing URL. Diablo pushing it a little bit further. Going to get a little bit too deep. Diablo's going to go down, but has the souls, which now level 10. That's only going to cost 75. But he can 25 tracer trying to keep up the season salad. The taunt turns around on the tracer. Tracer's going to recall just in time. Variant does go down, but so does tracer. Tigers with a well placed grenade. Hanzo's going to get finished off by the URL and Anduin as well, saying his prayers. Hoggers is saying, you know what? I'm I'm out of here, guys. <laughs> Diablo's back. See you later. And a staggering blow of two into a stun, but getting caught by the Immortal, that's going to be very unfortunate timing, stepping up, causing the Immortal to do that AoE. And that's going to give Anti-Clown Association a four kills, a five kills for one. In that exchange, overall, I'll, you know, I'll take that usually. There was a lot going on there, Silicon. There was a lot going on, lots of buttons pushed. It almost looked like they were going to be able to get a kill, but then they were able to turn it around. Anti-Clown Association just dominating, dominating this map. Absolutely. Both teams getting their bruiser camps during halftime. ACA going up to finish off this objective. It looks like there's going to be a fight real quick. Light bomb, lightning breath. Blah, blah. In a arrow, Hortipult, and obviously Pulse Bomb for Tracer and whatever level 10 upgrade she got. Uh, here, we'll show talents. Uh, it looks like Baby Makers is looking for this opportunity to fight. They're down a talent here. You're all jumping across onto the Diablo. Here comes the Rhaegar with the a taunt on the Light Bomb Diablo. Light Bomb goes off, not hitting anyone. Titan is going to finish off that kill. Charge into the Hanzo. Taunt not available yet, though. So Hanzo is going to be able to walk away. Tracer di dipping and dashing at half health, going to make it away using that mobility. So ACA says, all right, cool. We'll take the Immortal. Oh my, take a look at this um, bot keep. 
While that was going on, we saw Sylvan Sylvanas using her black arrows and pushing with that camp, but then Augur came along and said, get out of here, and then they turned around, but almost went down. Yeah, it got a lot of progress. And, and oh, ooh, big hey, hey, to the Tychus! Yeah! Caesar Sally comes oh. in trying to peel off. Operation, big lightning breath. Operation Red Rescue Squad inbound. I guess Blue Rescue Squad. And, uh... Oh! Turning Tracer gets blown up after the recall. And this looks like it could be the end here. There's a big old light bomb on the Anduin. Cheekies is going to fall. Lupus, though, on the Hanzo, going down. Kind of on the wrong side of the wall there. No jump available. Just keeps about to fall. I think with uh, Hogger, double digit health. I saw 13. This is uh, three kills right now. ACA is in an opportunity to finish off the core, but they're only level 15. This could be rough. But they're at least yeah. distracting, and the Immortal gets a lot of keep value if they don't win here. They do get the shields down. It is going down. You see Caesar Salad just, you know, chink, chink, chink with his big broadsword. Absolutely. And <laughs> Rhaegar just keeping up the team. Those anti heals doing a lot. Especially at that 4 and 13, I think, has a lot of heal value. Yeah. Diablo does end up going down to the, to the pupper. And here comes the Immortal at half health. 30% core. There's an air. It's going to catch a couple, but that's not going to be enough. Game number one at just past 11 minutes, going to be GG and Tracer on the losing side saying GG easy. Uh, it's always always good to see both teams having fun with it, and when it's the when it's the losing team saying easy, I don't think it's toxicity. So, <laughs> well, Taco, we got our wish for murderation. Um, at 15 to three kills. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a lot kills. of blood. But yep. there were a lot of times that heroes got away with nothing as well. So lots more blood on the battlefield. Uh, let's take a look at... I guess I'm on my soundboard. At our map screen as we come up. That does take the score to 1-0. to zero. I anticipate Baby Makers picking up the first pick. And so we'll see what map ACA takes us to. It's Brobuntu, welcome back. Good to see you again, friend. Also, thank you to Smitty and Retired Hero for the follows during that game. I owe people channel points. So having seen game number one, Sil, what, uh, in the way that ACA played if if you're then picking a map where do you think they go do you think they go for the same type of macro abuse or i'm not sure it matters that was a very dominant performance um well played they knew when to push they knew when to engage um i i'm not gonna speculate because i think it it could go either way we'll see how um Baby Makers responds Absolutely. to this. I'd we be interested to see how the bands change. We definitely don't want to count Baby Makers out because here in this play, as we saw, uh, ACA found every advantage they could and pressured it. And Baby Makers has that ability too. So if they get those opportunities, I would love to see how they seize on them and turn it around. And it creates kind of that snowball effect that we see that we saw on yep. that map, especially a map like that where the objective's in the middle every time like that, it's hard to get your feet back out there once you start to be on the back foot. And exactly. So, 6.5 out of 10, no comeback mechanic. I wonder if we'll see a Sylvanas ban at least. I mean, she got a lot of value with um, Black Arrows. Yes, she did. Um, lots of value. Uh, looking for those opportunities to push when the teams are away and uh, finding just finding all those little sneaky sneaky chances all right it looks like I have been adopted by anti-clown association so okay join in the game hey buddy yeah you sleepy boy you sleepy boy Aw. 
pup's all curled up. Yeah. We call that the fox ball when my dogs do that. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right, so we are going to go to good old Braxis Holdout, chosen by Anti Clown Association. Baby Makers did take first pick. And so with that, let's uh, roll into the draft. Do you think Taco think we're going to see some Genji play? We could see some Something Genji. Something spicy. Maybe Probius, some, maybe? Uh, yeah, that'd be fun. You know what I saw earlier this week was some um, Lost Vikings play on this map. I've I've heard good things about the, uh, Vikings all in one lane. I've heard really good things about and then using those vikings to disrupt rotation. You can split one off, put them in the bush. Messes with people trying to switch to the other lane. No Maev and no Hogger. Yeah, the Hogger band coming through. Weren't they the ones that picked Hogger though? They did. Mar Marbuck Marbuckle played it in the last game. Yeah, I think Kelsier plays a pretty good Hogger and that may be what is being avoided. Mmm, no Phoenix. All right. You think Phoenix. that's a target target ban, or do you think? I think how it's do you a feel target ban, but Phoenix lasers are really good against uh, coming out Zerg wave. All right. They don't have first pick, so they banned out that Rhaegar. They didn't want to risk the other team taking it. But Lupus goes ahead and picks up that Junkrat, which I love seeing Junkrat on this map. Junkrat, Unless well, it depends it's on against me. You're on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but then that means you also have to find someone who plays Junkrat. So the Rhaegar also banned by ACA. So both both teams banning something that they pick on their own team from the previous game. And we do see Rexar and a Nubrak. Now Kelsier is usually off laning, from what I understand, to uh, for. ACA for the times that I've seen them, but it looks like he's playing more into that damage role right now. And uh, yeah, look, kind of like we were talking about, most of these bands are going to be target bands because it's high level play. These players know each other, they do their scouting. So you're not going to see, oh, oh, this this hero has a really good win rate, we're going to ban it. You're going to see, no, this, this player has a good win rate with this hero. We've seen what they've done. And coordinated and so yeah you don't get my abs no you don't get phoenix um, now with this early draft i like the anubrak for moving around you did call the genji getting a genji across to uh across to the lanes to help out a buddy is really big brightwing band to help minimize because genji to haka and a brightwing together you can ha suddenly have a uh a, f a three-man gang so you got a 4v1 in the off lane Yep, and there's the Sylvanas ban. Absolutely. I feel like I get a cookie for predicting that. Yeah, you got the Ginji and the <laughs> Sylvanas. So really, really good calls uh, from you on this draft, and I think a really strong draft for, from both teams so far. Ooh, that's a lot of lockdown on the side of Anti-Clown Association. Uther, Inubrak... I don't know what kind of Chromie Kelsier plays, but whether it's Sand or Loop, it's still CC. Yeah, I, you know, I think he's gonna go Loop here based off of how much mobility these heroes have. The Haka can borrow out of Sands, Genji can dash out of Sands, Junkrat can, can cuss out of Sands. Granted, Junk, they can also kind of do that stuff after the Loop. Guide my path. Uh -oh. but... Going full dive over here with the Tyrael and the Karazim. That's interesting. Definitely exci excited to see how this plays. I think, you know, they can get to the Rexar, they can get to the Chromie with that and get some good damage out, but Uther, with the armor on top of the fatter heals because they're really long cooldowns, I, f I feel like they'll have a hard time getting that execution off. Yeah, I, I would guess that they're going to try to dive that Chromie as much as they can. Ooh, spicy pick with the Valera. This is the second time I've seen Valera in Storm Div. And Are you excited? I am so excited. So excited. 
Silver Arrow talking about Loop super weak into their team. And I think what you mean, Silver, is that because they're so mobile, it would be difficult to uh, kill them. I feel like you have the same problem with Sands, though. Personally. I don't know. But the Sands would be point control. That's that would be one argument for that. Yeah. Well, given these quick little assessments that we have with that, so Coffee, compare these drafts for me. Um, I don't know. It, it does look like Blue Team has a very strong draft right now. Rexar up there, this is one of Rexar's um, best maps. He has an ability to stay on point, keep getting that soak. Also, all of the stuns. They just have an incredible amount of CC. Yeah, I think I think the uh, the oppressiveness of blue team has a lot of potential. I think that Baby Makers has a lot of opportunities to escape that threat and then re-engage. But since we are now in the Nexus for Anti Clown Association, we've got Nintori on the Rexar, Kelsier on Chromie, Caesar Salad on the Bug, Valimar on the Uther with the seconds. Hammer of Justice and got filled on my girl Valera. That is Anti-Clown Association. All right. And we've got Lupus on the Junkrat, Dead Wish on the Genji, Marbuckle on the Dahaka, Cheekies on the Kerazim, and Zero on the Tyriel. Oh, look at this. Mid lane fight. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all, all down mid. <laughs> got a, guys, this is not the ARAM map. I mean, we could go to Brax's Outpost. I would support. I would absolutely support a Braxis Outpost in Storm Div. El Arena, thanks for the follow. Got some support for the Baby Makers in here. And we see a uh, large form push the top, gonna get a drag on the Misha, but ACA coming down into the bot lane. There's gonna be a lot of disruption on the Junkrat, gonna get some Ws landed, gonna get some stuns. Chromie does go Time Walker's Pursuit, gonna get that vision. Gonna get that faster trap arming time for quicker responses. And Zero getting caught on his way down into the lane. Gonna throw out El Druin so that after the Anubrak stuns expire, he can get away. All right. There's big rotation coming up to top. Trying to get that pick onto Marbuckle, but Marbuckle is just too fast and is able to get out safely. Good, uh, All right. A, <laughs> if you take a, a look, yeah. yeah. While they were trying to gank Marbuckle, um, the, their team, her team, took advantage of this and took a camp. I like it. Great yeah. call yep. on the side of Baby Makers. Really, really smart call too. Seeing that, that in, not invade that gank up on top, saying, "Hey, we have an opportunity to get some pressure." This is what I was talking about about looking for those advantages. So getting that gank, or not gank, getting that camp bottom, making a huge rotation with their mobility. They're going to get a kill on Rexar. That is first blood. Both teams, even levels, is going to be a little bit of uh, some more battling going on. But a new rack is going to make it out with the help from the Uther stun. And top's going to go red. So that's going to stop the ACA channel. So 50% channel on those beacons during all of that for ACA. So I'm not so sure that losing the camp and the Rex are there. Is this necessarily a bad thing for them? Because they still got a lot of objective value. The Haka in trouble in the top lane. He's going to burn out. These are solid looking to get an invade on the side of Baby Makers. He's homie assist in incoming. Big fight over this camp. Deadwish getting very low. Chromie just spitting out her W everywhere. Big damage going out. Zero so low. Can they stay on point? And the answer is no. The camp invade is successful and they got the first Zerg wave on the side of Anti Clown Association. Yeah, really big objective uh, objective value there fighting in the baby maker side so they couldn't really get out. Ooh, a kill on Valera from the Genji here in this bush. Interesting. Didn't even see her over there. Uh, so fighting on the Babymaker side in that camp, Junkrat having a lot of value on the camp, but ultimately not being able to get the cap. And all the while, progress bar goes up for ACA, and they've got a big wave coming in. And they've got a big flank come in on on Marbuckle, but she's able to escape yeah. safely. And the red wave is already gone. Yep. 
So looks like Top is going to be pushing into this fort. Kirill moving out past onto the Rexar. The rest of ACA not there. And uh, <laughs> so that fort doesn't go down. But Valera finishing off the Dahaka down to the bottom lane with Kelsier and Caesar Salad. So they're going to get some push here. The Beetle Boy is going to help tank a little bit along with these minions. Here comes Genji flying in from the side along with Kirazin walking down with Material. L2. Yeah, interesting junk. Junkrat staying up top to defend. Probably just holding space, waiting for Marbuckle to come back. I think so, but Marbuckle's going mid. There's not a lane there. Anti-Clown Association successfully taking down the walls and the towers. Big stun out onto the Tyrael. Lots of sands coming out, and Tyrael does go down. And not gonna get Here. that drop does hit Valera for, for a little bit of trade value. Yeah, that was uh, a big a big defense coming out from Tyrael and friends. But Tyrael going down in the process, but this fort hardly taking any damage. So, and Tyrael's back up. All right, Taco, do you see anything in those, uh, in the talents that we see so far that stand out to you? Uh... Other than that time walk is pursuit, uh, we've got Wave of Light about halfway done. Go, we do see the Shuriken quest on Genji, which I don't know why anybody plays Genji, so, you know. Uh, <laughs> this is Genji's best trap. map, we're to be fair. <laughs> Alright, we do see the sands coming out of Chromie, so... I think that was to be expected since there weren't really any great time loop targets on the side of Baby Makers. Big Stun coming out. The Swamp of Sadness being drunk. They're being invaded. Tyrael goes down. Staying on point, seeing if you end, but Genji dashes away. Goes down by Chromie. Misha trying to hold. And they do manage to get it. And Mark Buckle goes down via the Valera. Gotta love Valera combos. And, like he said, the Swamp of Sadness is the level 8 pick for Chromie. Level 10 is almost online for anti Clown Association. And they're getting this advantage again on uh, early in the game. They, the objectives in the middle of the map, they're pushing into the base. Because besides the anti Clown Association, really kind of dictating how this map is going. Genji looking for an opportunity to get the top one. Trying to scout out the Valera. Misses with the Shuriken. So Valera's going to jump on top. Almost going to kill the Genji. Genji's going to be able to protect and dash away. And that is a... Valera's looking for Valera. Genji. Oh, go, Valera, well, go, 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 Yeah! Oh, oh, what an escape by Deadly. Oh, no, but... Rexar. Oh, Rexar misses Genji. his... Genji run. with the Death Run, wish. Genji. There's a Boris after him. They <laughs> um, Dead Wish does have a Protect and... They are looking for Dead Wish. Yeah, the objective <laughs> is going to go over to Anti Cloud Association. That's going to push bottom. So the more attention paid top by Baby Makers, the better for Anti Cloud Association. Junker is going to go clear by. Ginji did manage to hop away to safety on the top side. And ACA saying, we're not going to waste any more time chasing. We need to get some value somewhere. Wow, the escapes from the Ginji. <laughs> what? That was spicy. Uh, we wanted blood, and we were seeing them be bloodthirsty. They were trying but, to deliver. Yep, and but they do have tens. They know they can push. They had the full Zerg wave. They're going to be creating their win con right Dash now. In onto the kidney from the Anubrek. Silence out on the Tyrael. Tyrael's trying to walk away. Serious salad realizing he made a mistake. He's at a no health. 10% health. Oh, the Divine Steel popped. Out. The El Druid teleports working out for Tyrael. Genji's gonna go down instead. Anubrak still alive somewhere on the mini map down on the bottom side. That's gonna be two kills instead for ACA. And wow, what a save by Uther. And Balamar is owed a drink. The level 10s have been out for a little bit now. So we do see, is that Legion of Beetles? I love it on Braxis. With <laughs> with Unleash the Boars, the Divine Shield, which we saw save the bug, the Swamp of Sadness, which we saw a few levels ago, and the Smoke Bomb for Valera. Big Stun coming, coming out on zero. Silence. Tyrael does go down, looking for some trait value. But the Beetle Boy is thick. Yeah, he does get that cooldown reduction, though. When this hit, level 10s are out. We're going to see Sanctification for Tyrael. 
Rip Tire, X Strike, Isolation, and Question Mark. Or, oh, uh, seven sided? Seven sided? That's right. Lyra again camping out, looking for the rotations from Baby Makers, always looking for an opportunity to get a jump and piss someone off. But see, oh, Kelsey are getting goofed out of place, puts the Swamp of Sadness down, but it is not enough. Oh, and now the chase oh, like is on for Valera. No, instead, the chase is on for the boss. The boss is not oh, running no. away. Boss, you're going not to like kill this. you if you don't leave. But here comes... Not like this. Here comes the throw pit. We've got a 4v5 in the middle of Nubrek growing on in. Oh, the Haka getting by the V7 seven side strike for the rescue on the Karazine. Is that going to be enough? The X-Strike comes out. It's But Junkrat is going to go down first. The boss is dead. They're fighting over the cap. Hero's going to fall. This is going to be a lot of trade value coming out of this Tyrael explosion. Karazine falls in the process, oh, no. though. And Genji to Haka having to get off. Not going to survive. And that is a full five-man throw pit in the boss. ACA clearing the way. Level 14. Everybody's dead on the side of Baby Makers. They're going for the corner. Oh, my goodness. You saw that coming. Woo! I saw it. <laughs> I saw it coming so far. Uh, I saw it coming. My, my heart was like, not like this, not like this. <laughs> now it is level 14 and they did just now get through the shield. That's going to be another 30%, 40% off the core minions catapults, putting in some pressure, but baby makers pushing out, trying to push ACA out of the base. Karen's going to get that seven side strike, but get stunned and killed by the Chromie. The three, four level advantage is just a huge stat difference. And, but here comes Genji. Valera chasing out the Tyrael. Tyrael's gonna go down again. Looks like a big old cluster for the trait value. Gonna take some off a of got build, but two people dead. Five man push into this core is still pressure. The shield goes back down. Genji does get the kill on Val on Valera, chasing Valera out all the way out of the base, but a one percent core probably not. Yeah, and now you have boss on core. Finally made it through that top keep. GG. Another dominant performance by Anti-Clown Association. The opportunities taken, and um, I'll show talents here at the end of the game. There was a lot going on there at the end, so talents kind of fell to the wayside. Here is a look at those talents. But, yeah, the... It, it, I can't... We, I can't feel like we can fault Baby Makers for that call on boss. They got a kill. They needed a way back into the game. The only thing available really at the moment was boss. So it's kind of one of those high risk, high reward opportunities when they're already far on the back foot. And Was there one person down on the side of Anti-Clown Association? Uh, I think Rexar there... was killed. Was it Rexar? Someone was killed. Chromie, because that was right after Kelsher got caught, right? Yes, exactly. I wonder if trying to invade on their camp, because they were obviously taking camp at that point, might have been a little bit more beneficial, especially with that extra damage from camp aggro instead camp of going really for good. boss. Mm -hmm. All right. Going to game three. Do you have any expectations, um, map, where they might want to go? Um, I would say Hanamira, but it's not in the pool. Um, let's take a look at... So, available is still Alterac, Tomb of the Spider Queen, Towers of Doom, and Vilskaya. I think if it's up to ACA, we're going to Towers of Doom. Alright. It's still see. middling objectives. There's opportunity to bully out. Uh, well, in, while kind of like Alterac, the objectives are still away from the forts a bit, I feel like it gives... While Towers of Doom is Towers of Comeback, it's harder to it's it's harder to fight your way back in instead of kind of luck sacking in. And it is it is Towers of Doom. Phil, are you like <laughs> you what? And oh, no, <laughs> no different. Different After the same character, oh. but I'm a different person. Yes, 
I'm not a named after Sylvanas. It's Sylphrenia from the Way of Kings books. <laughs> yeah, it was very confusing. Well, Twitch, that is why I am Sil Coffee now, right, because I, but, I, I did have a previous team member who was named Sil also. Yeah, and I because I think he's asking about the books, not the player. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, oh, really? Well, right. Be, well, because I don't think... I don't know. Most people assume it, Sil is it, for Sylvanas. Oh, yeah, but... Oh, that too. Unless, um... But... I mean, I've talked to Kels here before, avid reader and stuff, and I don't think he's a he is a big fan of like following Div E necessarily. So I think, well, of course not. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I, but I, don't, I thought maybe he knew Sylphrenia. Definitely a possibility. Um, but Towers of Doom now. Um, Sil Coffee, how do you yes. feel about the the team setups? Are you ready? In what? In I'm I'm totally ready. Good. It, oh no no get no. get oh. out of here! <laughs> it's not me. I'm not in charge. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So with that, um, Silver Arrow. It's not Volskaya. It is Towers of Doom. Divi best Div. Thank you. Thank you, my lord. Uh, we are going to Towers of Doom. Picked by Anti Clown Association. Baby Makers getting that first pick. And I think we're ready. I'm ready. Let's do this. I always joke about getting to getting to play when I get into the lobby before one of the other players. Or like I'll get in and it'll be like me and one player on one side and the whole other team is in already. And I'm like, yeah, this is fair. Let's go. We got this. <laughs> Um, so Towers of Doom, I'm going to ask you the same question I asked you before. How do you think we're going to see this draft play out? And what bands oh, do you think are going to come through? They, they have to ban Sylvanas, right? Uh, yeah. I, 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 would see, I would see that again. Um, maybe even seeing a Malthiel ban if they don't pick it up. Pale Horse being able to rotate really quickly. Just really putting all that pressure on the bot camp. Getting um, invades. Could be really valuable with Pale Horse. What do you think? I think that's something that we're that we're accustomed to seeing, right? Getting yeah. that double soak rotation, really big, uh, really big push in the bot lane. I think what's going to be important here, and we kind of see it with that Falstad ban. Let me swap over to the draft so our friends can see as well. Uh, Go, you know what I want to see. But seeing something like right wing into Hakusin, the opportunity to rotate on uh, or across the map uh, quickly, I think it's going to be something we see prioritized. What do you want to see, Coffee? I I'm, don't blame me for this, but let's see some Chogal. I want to see something spicy. That's not how you spell Probius. <laughs> Chogal. Let's see some Chogal, Probius, and Ural all in the same game. All right, there's that um, Sylvanas ban. This is this is also the Falstad's obviously a um, target ban, but like I said, I think Falstad has some of the best disengage and engage ultis in the game. Johanna also being banned out. Johanna's just strong right now in general, so it's very meta ban. I don't know if there is a particularly deadly Johanna player on the on the side of Baby Makers. But I understand that band. She could take the fun. She's the fun police and um, anti-engage for engage comps. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, again, so the fun police growing up to be a much more disruptive fun police. I exactly. Think is a pretty good assessment. We do see Rhaegar go over to the baby makers though, and then in uh, annoying fashion. <laughs> Lunara and Lucio make their way <laughs> in to the draft. We're going to drop some beats. We're going to do some hoppy bitch stuff. And it's just going to be a lot of a lot of really obnoxious stuff coming out of anti Clown Association right now. Yeah, that's a huge rotational advantage having Lucio on this map. Lots of walls, lots of move boosts. 
What I want to know is when you're move boosted. Well, one, when, especially if you're move boosted. But two, how far do you, do you have to be traveling in order to make stopping the mount worth it because of the mounting time? Oh, I do not know the answer and to I that. Do you? Because you move <laughs> at it's approximately four thirds the speed. You, you know, if if you're gonna walk farther than th farther than four seconds, you mount. I think is where it balances out. Last ban. I don't know. Any, See, uh, oh! Ooh, a stitch no there. stitches. Any mathers in the chat to help me out with that? So, Dahaka and Vala is a pickup. Again, we have that, that global from Dahaka, and that's going to help out because of the mobility of Lunara and Lucio. I think the stitches ban a little bit interesting uh, with the Lunara, the move speed from Lucio. You got some, so the Lunara with that execute, uh, execute ability. Once she gets leap, um, I feel like stitches is a pretty good ban here. I think I've seen ACA run a lot of stitches in the past as well, and we get the space goat yet again from Nintori, and Garrosh comes out, but Silver Arrow calling the game Vala. for Rhaegar Vala. <laughs> I know he yeah. didn't say the Rhaegar part, but he, I know he means it. He may be a little bit biased about the Vala pick, maybe. <laughs> well, I mean, for, for a Deathwing main, you would think. Exactly. Ooh! Zarya and Beetle Boy coming out in the side of Baby Makers. I don't know what to think about this draft anymore. Uh, the triple yeah. bruiser's fun. You got the hyper carry Vala Zarya with the shields and stuff to help out. Other than the shields, she gets an unstoppable, I think, for herself. Do, does... Mm -hmm. Do any of her shields empower their target? No, usually the, the shields can empower her, depending on what talent they she decides to take. Um, Asmodunk. Ooh! Asmodunk. You don't see that in high-level play as much, so that's interesting. Interesting draft. I'm excited about this game. Absolutely. All right, so we are... What, how excited are you? Tell me what about these drafts make you excited for this game while I get this prediction started. I, I don't get to see Zarya played that often. Um, do you? And I do enjoy no. playing Zarya, so I'm excited to see how this plays out. Yeah, and I think in Asmodan, I mean, Asmodan on Towers is kind of obnoxious, but also just the fact that he exists. Um, Super obnoxious. don't see super often in high level play like i was starting to mention uh just i think he's very susceptible to honestly things like a Rhaegar and ubrak engage i think he's gonna struggle with garrosh lucio Urel are going to help him out with that but i think he might have a hard time you know what I think chat should do? They should speculate how quickly Asmodunk is going to get his 400 oh, stack. We could have done a prediction for that. That'd too. be so fun. Oh, and it is an Annihilation, Madan, too. That's, that's, so. the, uh, that's the Heroes one, right? Oh, it's that, No, that's the push. Oh, it is. Oh, yeah, Raph. Yep. The, the Auto attack. Got filth on the Asmodan that we were just talking about. Caesar Salad, also known as Caesar Salad, on the Garrosh. Valamer dropping the four, beat on Lucio. Three, Kelsier. Two, Bringing it in on the Hoppy Deer and then Tori on the Space Gun, Fight. coast to coast. That is Anti Clown Association. Who do we got for Baby Makers? Um, Baby Makers, we've got Deadwish rocking that Zarya Marbuckle on the Dahaka, Cheekies on the Rhaegar, Lupus on Vala, and Zero on the Nubarak. Speaking of a Nubarak, getting a little bit of poke out through the bush, letting them know, hey, I bet you're there, and also I'm right, enjoy a stun. Vala and Zarya getting some cheese in the bot lane. Uh, taking a little bit of damage, but those shields are pretty helpful. And we do get your classic four man versus three in the bot lane. Oh, man, big thunder onto top. Caesar Salad, but he's able to walk away. They know that they can't push into those bot towers quickly because, you know, with any Garrosh player, he'll just toss you over. <laughs> yeah, but we do see uh, some action top gosh i'll take a lot of tower damage though getting dragged back in by the dahaka i will say i have seen aca take your rosh one time on towers of doom and it was the craziest ending i've ever seen to towers of doom 
where I forget what the final score was. I think it was three, three core points less on ACA's core, but Garrosh threw a sapper over into the dead zone for the last point. Oh, big and successful invade on the side of um, Baby Makers. Well done. I was scared that Garrosh was going to throw someone over into this mid tower, but they were able to take that camp pretty quickly. Yeah, and Garrosh died in the process, so that's going to be first blood for the game so far. Well, not so far. You can only have one first blood uh, per map. Weird how that works. Unless it's what? Diva oil? Mech oil? Nisha blood? Alright. And Babymakers does get their own camp as well. Really strong start for uh, the Babymakers. Getting a kill on your rail up top or in mid? Top? Somewhere. I think there was some Dahaka involved with that dying in the towers. New Rack Let's rotating see. down. Big the flank. flank. He's gonna miss all the stuns though, and the Indomitable coming out from Garage going to help him walk away. 40 stacks, 47 stacks on the Azadan thus far at two and a half minutes. Whenever a garage throws someone kind of in place, it just it reminds me of like a wrestling team, you know, when they like smash chairs. Oh, like when he when the, he doesn't throw them somewhere, he just up and down. It just throws them down, almost like a suplex. <laughs> so, uh, bro, Buntu, good question. So, right after that camp invade, I think uh, your rel got dragged by the Haka back into tower range with both towers hitting, and she just couldn't escape. First, first set of altars is up. That is going to be. That's going to be three altars. Top left gets capped by Yorel. There's a two man on Gottfeld. Asmodan trying to get away. He's got a little bit of help. The, the Haka burrowing to not get blasted by the. Yorel is going to slow him down just enough that he's not going to be able to get across. But Baby Makers was able to cap the mid port, we, the mid altar. We didn't really quite see. Oh no, Cheeky's fight. getting stunned out, and I think Cheeky's will be going down with a garage toss. Ooh, good catch in the mid. On the rotation, ACA stopping Baby Makers from making a full rotation to rescue their altar here. Uh, we were looking at the altar at Coffee, so good call out on that. Did not see it happen. And now with this 5v4, ACA is going to try to make a play here. No. And the garage stun quest already done. Is that 10 or 15? It's 15 stuns by 4 minutes. I need to talk to Caesar. On the side of Anti-Clown Association, they're creating a lot of space for Asmodan down here bot to get a lot of value. Working on getting that bot lane pressure and poking them out. Yeah, absolutely. Um, real quick, uh, that reminds me, I think there's a coaching... Oh, hang on, wait a second. I'll, I'll mention that in a second. Nice. Deadwish gonna finish the cap on the altar. A lot of fighting going on mid. That's gonna put... Baby Makers in the lead though, so far on this map. And then, and then Tori trying to get away from the Hungry Arrow. Volley getting moved back by the Lucio. Nubrek gonna come on into the Garrosh and the Lunar. Everybody just really spread out, trying to get damage out where they can. And it's not working out so great for either side. So they're just gonna split up, heal up, get their camps. Um, if we have a Storm Div mod in the chat, please let me know. I believe there is a way to get coaching from some of the Storm Div players uh and i forget how to do that and also is there still a valid match arena link real jumping over the wall onto this sapper camp and this is going to be a big invade ac saying we can do this too more stuns from season salad getting rid of the zarya on the other side yeah. of the burrow in onto the <laughs> camp and that's going to be a successful save by baby makers whoo sill that is my favorite thing, seeing a garage tosh people over that wall into the structure. Yeah, that was, no, it, it was the own structure of the person who got thrown, so it wasn't a dangerous throw, but it still got rid of one of the threats on the invade, even though they still lost the camp. It successfully defend the spot structure. It's nicely done. Uh, we are getting some shade for the Vala build in the chat. Well, we all know Silvero and his ball. He has very strong opinions about that. <laughs> One forty-six on the base on the uh, Q quest for Asmodon. Getting progress top. 
Yeah. Half health, Marbuckle responding. Asmodan, no mana. Marbuckle, half health. Balamur just going to go ahead and get this cap. Babymakers giving the altar and trying to respond to the top push. Got Phil still no mana, but a new rank. Now low health with Marbuckle. Oh, big tongue low. out on the on the Asmodunk. Asmodunk doesn't care. He just wants to keep dunking. Yeah, trying to get those stacks. Got some more stacks off of that. Now to 158. And he's gonna die for those stacks, but you know, he's scaling. And when you're scaling, you're like, eh, it's worth. Also, speaking of worth, ACA does manage to push down this bottom fort. Baby Maker's now getting rid of ACA, so they're not gonna be able to defend that fort so well. And Baby Maker should get it back here pretty quick. But Anti Clown Association not clowning around at all. You saw that uh, Vengeful Vines. Vengewood? Vengewood. Thornwood. Thornwood. You know. Thornwood Vine. Yeah, that's thing. yeah. Speaking of level tits, you want to do the honors? Sure. We've got Ardent Defender, Thornwood Vines, and Demonic Evasion, High Five, and Decimate. Speaking of mud, yeah, <laughs> so oh, a sticky garage. Then we got Expulsion Zone on the Zarya, Isolation, Ancestral Healing, Strafe, and Cocoon. Big stun coming out. There's the value of Decimate just creating mud, making it hard for baby makers to step forward. Marbuckle in the back lane getting a lot of damage out on Lunara, but Lunara is able to hippity hop in your way to safety. Oh, big too. tongue out on Kelsier, and Kelsier does go down. In oh, the big silence. In the There's that expulsion zone. Yeah, let's go. That was oh, this is spicy. Really good fight coming out of Baby Makers here. They did lose Azaria after the double kill, but it's it looks like it's gonna work out okay. Uh, maybe uh, with Azunam pushing mid, this is going to be a six cap already. And with two altars up, Azunam is gonna move down to cap. Oh no! Okay, Baby Makers did take the bottom one back just in time, so it's not quite a six cap. To answer your question, Taco has the cam. Uh, I think Lucio managed to block a cocoon with a high five. Is that what Silver's saying he saw? Hog? Alright, 12, 12 missiles in. So 32 to 20 on the board, halfway point for ACA towards victory, but it is towers of comebacks. There's only a one level difference, same talent here. Anubrek calling for help as he stops this cap. Cocoons the Lucio and Vol is gonna come in. Lunara doesn't want to get dead and that's gonna buy enough time for baby makers to, to successfully steal the invaded siege camp. And Lunara saying, fine, I'll just get my own. <laughs> Zero in a little bit of trouble if he does get caught here. But he is unstoppable because he's a beetle, but Nintori goes in with a big whack. He's able to walk away though. Yeah, five man gank on bot, not necessarily gonna wanna be on the receiving side of that. But Nubrak does make it just fine. Dahaka attending uh, to top, Asmodan heading up towards mid. Gonna try to take mid back and keep that pressure on it. That really is the way to this map to overwhelm. Oh, expulsion zone going out on those pumpkins, making a gauge on Caesar Salad. Unstoppable coming out. He's able to walk away. Strafe coming out by Lupus. Nintori jumping in. Yep. Asmodan. Successful defense. Asmodan does oh, to get big mid. stun. Cocoon coming out on. Yeah. Once the Nari comes Good out, kill the cocoon cheeky. gonna try to put some damage out. There's a lot of poison going on, but the AOE heals from Rhaegar is gonna help counter that. Newback throws back in onto the rail. Here comes the wolf, wolf, wolf. On as well. The goat becoming goat meat. Rhaegar gonna feast tonight. Vala picking up that kill to the finish, and Valamar just trying to skate away right now. Two altars are up, and it looks like Babe Makers is going to get both of them. They only have the one altar, but they need to cap early so that ACA can't come contest it and stop them from getting it all together. So it's only going to be four shots for 
baby makers, but and they need to get these forts back. Top is almost down. They need to work damage on coming out on zero. Zero is out of mana, but Cheeky comes in, gives them a heal, and they're able to walk out. Zarya picks up the kill on Kels here too. Lunara gonna go down, and now baby maker says, "Let's get our structures back." Looks like we see um, ACA posturing. They are going to start this boss up here. While um, baby makers are cleaning up their lanes, trying to get top back. Looking for a pick on Valimar, but... Unsuccessful. There is the boss cap for ACA, but... The battlefield has returned back to even. Everybody has their own towers back. The teleporter is online now. You're all going for that top camp. We do see... Uh, AC actually kind of wandering around the map, trying to get pressure back. Zarya Vala pick up that siege camp. And it's like they're going to try to siege mid. out mid here. Yep. The Numerous going to burrow away, get the stun combo out onto Godfield. Gottfeld's going to start taking Tower Aggro. There is the dunk. I believe he's almost done. 287 stacks, so about three quarters of the way. Cocoon out on Gottfeld. Almost got that pick on Zero, but Zero was able to burrow away. Strafe coming out by Vala saying, this is our structure. Get out of here. Are up. That oh, is big awesome. tongue out on the Yorel, and Yorel does go down. Yeah. Good advantage here for baby makers, and uh, so I expect them to trade tops and get the bottom one. Anubrek coming to delay Kels here, though. Lucio's going to get the boop. The, the uh, spine's not quite going to make it to the Lunara to stop that... Uh, to stop the the channel so that is going to be two for one 12 20 to 12 really closing that gap right now like you said this this particular map's called tower of comeback for a reason hitting that oh i do think they're going to be able to get this bot structure and indeed it does go down Nubrek just missing the burrow. Lucio getting his team out of danger. And now, Babymakers needs to defend this bottom fort, but they're going to go rescue Dahaka first. All right. Zero coming in with a flank. Paula doing her own spin to win with Strafe. Well, that was an interesting interaction, seeing the cocoon in an expulsion zone over it. Not oh. sure I've ever seen that before. It, it, it yeah. Just blast her out afterwards. Yeah, exactly. All right. Lots of poke damage coming out from Kelsier. They're going to try to go ahead and come down bot ACA and reestablish their um, pressure on bot. But we see that um, baby makers are electing to take their camp instead of keep that bot pressure. Yeah, that's uh, an interesting decision. I guess it's technically safer, but I think it hurts them in the long run, especially because there's only this one bottom altar, and that's where you really benefit from having that bottom fort because the enemy team has nowhere to retreat to. They have a dangerous engaged path. Nice disrupt on the stun from Caesar Salad getting knocked up by the spines. From a new oh, zone, big expulsion a zone coming out. But Lunara starting to get the uh, starting to get the channel off, going to get disrupted. And a big fight over this point. Cocoon out onto the Lunara. You see the Deathmates coming out from the Grosh, but Grosh gonna get blown up. And he just gets exploded into the air. You can see it's just his uh, pauldrons there disappearing now. And the red team getting pushed out by the blue away from that fort, that fort serving as a safe haven, and that is going to be channel over to baby makers. But they're still fighting. Big stun going out on Valimar, and Valimar does go down. Here comes the unstoppable, uh, the self unstoppable. I think that's like Hand of Freedom or something out of the URL. Uh, it's something, yeah, Hand of Freedom. 
Nope. Meanwhile, during this fight, Asmodan was able to secure the mid the mid tower. Yeah, but Asmodan is caught by the Dahaka. No, Dahaka's caught by the Asmodan. Uh, say what? And that's and Tari cool. wanting to go in. Yeah. Now, Unstoppable on your own was the level 20 as as Babemakers takes the uh, the ACA siege camp and they're going to start getting structures back. Quick look at these 20s and bosses up in 13, 10 seconds. We've got Seraphim, Intensifying Toxin, toxin Siege Breaker, Mixing Fire, and Deadly Calm. I really like dead, Deadly Calm at 20 if you're going to take Decimate at 10. Big engage from a new bracket. That's going to be a catch on Gottfeld. Asmodan goes down. Baby Maker is going to save this bottom fort, and they're going to hold on to their... their not quite an advantage, but they're catching up. Yep. Level 20. They're are closing gonna... that gap slowly, aren't they? Absolutely. They're gonna get it done. Level 20 is for Baby Makers. It is basically rewind on the Zarya Contagion on the Haka. I can never remember. Farseer's blessing. We've got the Farfly Quiver. That's a good one on Bala. And rewind for a new break. So there's a look at all of the talents, plus some. And here comes another altar. It's on the way up. Kelsier looking a little bit low. A new brat getting out of danger. They're fighting under their own fort that they've stolen from ACA. So ACA, ACA has a rough fight here, but the decimate coming out is going to do a lot with that damage reduction. Cocoon out onto the URL. This fort almost down by poison damage, but not quite. It's going to have a little bit of health left. Drosh is going to go down with the strafe. The Lucio falls shortly by the Anubarag, and that's going to be uh, 5v3. ACA wants to at least get this tower back, but maybe not quite yet. The altar's already been capped. No, Lunara's going to go ahead and pop it. See, the I think they're going to go... They're looking for boss right now. This is their time to go ahead and get those four more points to close that gap that we were talking about. Absolutely, Babemaker's looking to take the lead. For the first time this game, I think. No, they had it right at the beginning, right? They got the two. Mm-hmm. Jarrell hopping on in. Pops Using the unstoppable engine, it, but it's not quite enough. The expulsion expulsion zone, zone going out. Win. Let's go. <laughs> really good expulsion zone to cap the point. That looked like a Jarrell. Meanwhile, they got a six a cap second. on the side of ACA, though. Yes, uh, Lunara get, getting good siege damage out, going to take that over. Asmodan as well, of course, Asmodan dying for it. That's a big stagger with Asmodan down right now, but Asmodan hasn't been at really any of these fights because he's just pushing and pushing and pushing around, jumping over the wall to safety. And the top tower does fall to stop the six cap damage, but not enough, not enough of that per persistent damage to take the lead back from baby makers that mid fort's gonna fall so and as towers come up baby makers looking to hold on to this advantage they've got aca pushed back but they this can't is a very, just trade yeah this is a very uh, sticky situation because we also have these bot pumpkins coming Looking in if they're not addressed sneaky over here gonna go yeah cap do a back cap kelsey's gonna fall to the strafe and Dahak is going to channel, so that's going to be five for three. That's going to give ACA the lead back by one with those, like you said, those sappers moving in bot. It looks like they're going to make it if ACA or if Baby Makers can't get there in time. A little bit of minion wave is going to stall long enough. There we go. They do make it in time. So much pressure on this map. Towers of Doom is so, so stressful. This is why Asmodan is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> Zero in a little bit of trouble up here in the top lane. He's on an island. Will he get homies assist? Unfortunately. No, a new break does go down by that gank out alone on the moon no brightwing or anduin to rescue oh Ooh, and Tori getting an escape across the dead zone that expulsion zone trying to stop that but didn't quite work out there's the hammer knocking back 
AC trying to protect this top fort, but objectives are bought and they're buying time for Lunara, but is it gonna be enough? Right now, if they cap one altar, it's going to be, uh, that's going to be game. So Babymakers needs to get bought. Lunara is there and ready. And I think they're gonna try to take a fort back instead. Ah, uh, this this looks like it could be game. Oh, Dahaka's burrowed in. There's the dig down there to ensure that he can guard that bot objective. Giving his team time to come in for that mid objective. Although I think Asmodan's just gonna go try to take more structures while this I is think happening. So too. But it could it could cost the game if he's not with his team. Dahaka absorbing the attention from two. Uh, Zarya and Vala oh, big with tongue out by Marmbuckle Ancestral, Ancestral going to get reduced though by half and then the, the Farseer's Blessing going to finish off the, the topping off a lot of poison on Anubrak Cedar Salad and Tori going to be low cocoon Kelsier pops out in the middle of a whole bunch of bad guys Zarya trying to cap but getting disrupted by, uh, by Matt Damon and that's going to be two missiles over for Baby makers, they've got to cap this to not lose, but it won't win either. And boss is up in one minute. A big old fight here in the middle. And then a full thin. You still got the 1v1 up top. You're all coming to help out the Asmodan. Gonna try to take down the Haka. See the salad looking low. Gonna get the stun. Big old stun and shields. Kelsher's gonna stay alive, maybe, but. Uh, Dahaka dies up there. Garrosh is gonna go down. Yurel moving on up to get rid of the Anubarak. Maybe Asmodan gets stunned. Followed up by the Anubarak. The rewind is gonna be so strong. Notoria unstoppable, but not a kid. Now the Absorb is coming out. There's the Ardent Defender. It's gonna absorb a little bit of health. Anubarak's gonna get the cap, and that's gonna take the score to two to five. It's still, so now currently next altar wins. The boss is about to be up, and I'm surprised. What? At, I'm surprised at this. Whoa! There's an explosion zone, a wrap on the Lucio, and Lucio is gonna high five away. Dead wish, looking a bit low. Half health on the, the third of third of the health on the Zarya. I would have thought that they would have rotated immediately to boss with the death timers being so long for. I think the way the garage. boss was spawning, they still would have had oh. to wait long enough that it would have been a problem. I'm not 100% sure. But... Actually, I know why they didn't, because they still need to get mid and top back in with. Well, Asmatan was dead. Because all they had to do was take bot blue team to get a six cap again. Slavahe, welcome! Anubrek getting tossed and there's expulsion zones. The ancestral healing with the Farseer's Blessing goes out. Lots of poison damage. Anubrek uh, taking a lot of oh. damage. There's the heal block. Is it going to be enough with the shield? The Absopo comes out with the purge, but no. Anubrek's going to fall to the poison damage. The bottom fort goes down. The altar is about to spawn. Yurel falls as well, but the way Baby Makers has been playing, they may be able to push their way in. If they get this altar before Asmodan takes that fort, they win. So it's a race between the cap and Asmodan. And I so they should I think they're gonna send a front board. Rager's gonna try to cap and avoid taking damage from the Lunara, but there's the pop. Decimate comes out, the fort is at oh. half health. Oh, this is low. nail biting. And that fort is about to fall. The cap is almost done, and it gets interrupted again. Lunar is gonna fall. Oh, That's the six and cap it over. Does go and, and so this cap on the altar won't matter. That's going to be GG over to Anti Cloud Association in amazing fashion with only two health left on their core. GG and with the sweep on the set what what a disrupt what a crazy crazy map number three this sweep in dramatic fashion on towers and comebacks holy crap oh, oh. My goodness <laughs> 
What a game. There were some spicy fights in that last game. Oh, Darian, look at you being all cute. He rolled out of his fox curl into something else. Oh my goodness, that, no, not Steam. I'm not opening Steam yet. I need like 10 more minutes. Um. All right, Taco, do you see anything in the talents really quickly? Let me show the talents. Look at that damage though, like. I know. Lots of AOD damage coming out from the Vala. Uh, if you want to look at the talents real quick, I'm going to see if I can get a hold of ACA for a Weber view. All right. Don't see anything really out of the norm on these talents. Um, yeah, you don't see a lot of decimates these days, but I, I like it. I like decimate. Uh, we've got Gottfeld in Lobby 5 in the NGS chat if you would like to uh, make your way over there. All right. And we did see a little bit of, uh, speaking of the talents, we saw a little bit of questioning of the W build on Vala, but like it was mentioned, all of those builds are good. I really liked the way that they used the Asmodan to just keep up the pressure. And oh, yeah. Yeah, just a lot of like, hey, I see you guys are fighting, but uh, uh, I'm the Lord of Sin. See you later. I'm going to go do my own gluttonous thing. Speaking of the Asmodan, we are joined by Gottfield. Gottfield, what a set. What a nail-biting game number three. Uh, what's what's going on, man? Uh, I don't know. I'm pretty happy we won that game. My Asmodan win rate was almost tarnished. It was almost tarnished? <laughs> I turned you up a little bit. You sounded a little bit quiet to me, so I can only imagine you sounded quiet to others as well. Um, but yeah, so there was that was a risky play there at the end because if they managed to cap, you you lose that game and go to game four. Uh, but if you win the race to get that that fort, you'll win the game. Obviously, we saw what happened, but was that like a full team call? Was that like, hey, you guys got this? I'll be right back. Like, what was going on? Uh, no, that was me. I thought the game was, like, pretty over at that point, and, uh, I didn't think there's any way we are gonna win a 4v4, so... I, uh, I went for it. I went for the move, and it worked. You, you did what we call a pro-gamer move? Yeah, precisely. <laughs> so, Congratulations. Yeah, what a... So, games 1 and 2 were pretty dominant. I don't want to dwell on those too much, but this game number 3, what was the, what was the plan going in? What was... What was the talk, the the, the uh, kind of the overall mentality going into this third game? Um, I didn't really know what was happening at all during the draft. And then I think Caesar said Asmodan for the last pick, and I just picked Asmodan. <laughs> you said, okay, thanks. Yeah, if, if you insist, I will. <laughs> and uh, I guess it worked. The hero kind of carried that game. Yeah, it was. Sure did. You got a lot of value out of Asmodan. Lots of, uh, lots of being chased down too. They really couldn't get enough of trying to get to you. Um, the uh, the Garrosh was. I'm trying to remember back, but I remember. I, I don't know who it was playing. It might have still been Season Salad, but your y'all uh, ACA a few seasons ago played. Towers of Doom, and I remember I still have it clipped in my in on my Twitch, uh, where y'all won by Garrosh throwing a uh, Sapper minion over the dead zone for the last last hit. So every time you're on Towers of Doom, I'm like, I want to see Garrosh. I'm, I'm ready for Garrosh. Um, but the the plan with the draft, you said you weren't quite sure what was going on with it, uh, and it looks like you're set up for team fights until you have this Asmodan. So you're like, yeah, I'll play Asmo, but did it did it make sense? Uh, well, it was like they picked well, Zarya, so we didn't want to we didn't want to fight them, okay, bot anymore. So we just were like, we should pick a hero that plays mid and takes their mid and top for it. And okay, that makes somehow sense. it ended up being Asmo now. Okay, Th thanks for clarifying. That makes a lot of sense. Um, now that you know, hyper carry with a lot of protection. Um, the the boss play, well, I think there were a couple, but uh, Nintori 
is about to 1v5 steal the boss and then gets knocked out but that's when the momentum started shifting to baby makers and you said there at the end that you're like i don't see how we win this uh so i got my hail mary so towards as when that happened and the momentum started shifting did y'all was was there a change in what was going on in comms or like how, how did how did y'all adjust to going from ahead to behind and make a plan to try to hold on to the lead uh i think we were we, we were winning and then we started having too much fun and then we started losing and then uh <laughs> then it was kind of hard to like start winning at gigs our comp was like so so awkward so uh we kind of just stopped we stopped being a bunch of goobers and <laughs> You stopped uh, we tried to win. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, and I, I thought it was doomed anyways at that point, but... but they the power of us they, they really showed why they deserve to be here in Storm Division with you guys. I know that y'all y'all swept, but they, they really played hard into that map. Uh, so, Coffee, did you have anything to ask Gottfield? I don't have anything else to ask you, man. Oh, did I Great feel games. I had so no, I had so much fun watching, especially that last match. That was <laughs> super fun to watch. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, Gottfeld, but before we lose you, let's uh, hear from you. Anything else that you want to mention? Anybody you want to say hi to? All that good stuff. Uh, I'll shout out twitch.tv forward slash freepx, and that's all I've got to mention. <laughs> All right. Very consistent with the ACA interviews. All right, Gottfeld, you have a fantastic evening, and tell everyone we said hi. All right, thank you. See you. Have a good one. Good night. Coffee, I will call you right back. All right. I will try to find you. There you are. And my friends, my viewers, my wonderful compatriots, as we make our way back to... Let's take a look at this map view also. I get there's there's the wonderful coffee um, as we start drawing this evening to a close remember that you can find sill coffee at twitch.tv slash coffee with sill she has been casting a good chunk of NGS these days and you said you're gonna cast some replays tomorrow I'm casting replays tomorrow at three and then I'm also casting um, a silver arrow game tomorrow with his fallen lords what? Oh, that's going to be super yeah. exciting. Um, and is how else can people find you? Oh, um, you can just find me on Twitch at Coffee with Cell. I'm around the Nexus, so say hi to me in the NGS Discord if you want. Um, but that's pretty much it. I guess on Twitter you could find me, but nah, I'm not going to give that one out. Okay, well, it's in the command. <laughs> if you want to find it, it's in the command. I didn't tell you that. Um, <laughs> And also, as always, we are joined by the this time sleepy and not barking Darian. Uh, he does have his own Twitter as well, where he does cute stuff. And thank you so much for joining us. I'm Taco. This is at or this is twitch.tv slash El Taquito, and you can find me at the Lil Taco on the Twitters. I'll keep, I try to keep you updated on my casts on my other streams on when my team is playing so coffee is also part of region rebel and we're having a pretty okay uh, pretty okay season so far so really really exciting i'm going to take a look to see uh who's playing is there anybody else uh is there anybody else casting ngs right now and otherwise you can generally find me hanging out with uh heroes of the storm or other random games all right we're gonna go check out jazzeline and with that everybody i would like to wish you a fantastic evening so coffee thank you so much for joining me good night twitch